Mr. Coughlin. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman and uh, Colonel Koch. Thank you so much for your service to our country and for your uh, willingness to come before this committee. And, and again, my apologies um, for what's occurred to you and your family. Um, help me out here. Is, uh, in, I understand there was inclement weather, and so because of that, you didn't see uh, your wife's casket go into the ground. Do you, is, is it normal procedure in Arlington that, that uh, in um, weather conditions where there's not inclement weather that one would observe, that the family would observe the casket going into the gravesite? Uh, I, I, I really can't answer that. Uh, I think you should ask. That will be, ask, okay. I'm very well, I think that would be a question certainly that we raised to uh, the staff at Arlington. The, um, what was the attitude of, in your communications with the staff at Arlington, uh, the graves registration staff or whatever they, if there's a civilian term for it, I'm not familiar with it. What did, uh, tell me about the, uh, um, the course or the conduct of those communications. Uh, I mean, were they bureaucratic? Were they sympathetic? How would you describe them? Uh, certainly they were sympathetic. I, I, uh, when I spoke with the funeral director, he said, well, it's probably going to be several weeks before we'll be able to do the burial. And the night that we had the, the viewing in Raleigh, he came to me and said, it's going to be on the 6th of January. And she had died on the 20th of December. So it was probably as quick a, as, as I would have even thought of. Uh, the man that dealt with us uh, the day of the actual burial was as nice as could be. And like I say, the only complaint I had was not with, at that point, was not with Arlington, sure. it was with the VA and my, and my concerns about the, the headstone. And then uh, the burial itself, as far as it went. When, the, uh, when you were first notified, the communications at the point in time where you realized that there was a problem oh. and you had contacted uh, oh, the staff okay. at Arlington, tell me about the those communications and how they were. I went back too far, I think. No, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> uh, it was an Army lieutenant colonel. He called me up. He left me a message and said uh, something like, we've got a problem. No, he said, please call this number. Okay. And he gave me the number. Good. He didn't say there was. That's good. When I called him, he then told me there was a problem. He explained it to me exactly. And, and now I remember what I was going to mention to Mr. Young. Uh, they dug up my wife's grave and someone said, I thought that was illegal to dig up a grave without permission. And I don't know if that's true or not. They'd have to ask the legal people. But that was one of the concerns more people had than I did. But uh, anyway, everybody that I dealt with in the building where, where they bring the families, everything there was, was fine, had no problems. They escorted us to our cars, took us out to the grave site, waited for us, went back. Uh, showed us how the car should be set up. So I have no complaints about the, that part of it. Okay. Uh, the lieutenant colonel was very nice. He, he explained it. He did not try to make excuses. He said, here's the facts. And I think that's what I like about the military. They don't try to make excuses. They tell you the facts. Mm -hmm. If you don't like the facts, tough luck. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, he was, it, everything from that point of view, I thought was okay, other than the fact that I didn't like what he was telling me. Sure. Not how he was telling me, but what he was telling me. Okay. The gentleman yield, just for. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Young. Mr. Kaufman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, well, I understand we've changed leadership at the very top. And, but yet there were whole echelons of subordinate leadership that were complicit in these activities that are still there. I mean, I, mean, I just find that, that, that stunning. I mean, this is an organization that is rotten to its core. This is an organization that uh, has conducted itself really, uh, or I think the best way to describe it is a culture of incompetence, if not a culture of corruption. And if this was a military organization, 
and such an investigation would have occurred, um, not only would the Uniform Code of Justice have been used fairly dramatically, but at all of those echelons of subordinate leadership, they would have been relieved. They would have been gone. You know, I tell you, this, um, this organization, and I'm a, a combat veteran, and I can tell you, does not reflect the, the values of our military. They do not honor our military and their sacrifices. And they need to go. And so I'm, gonna, I'm asking you, what actions are being taken to change leadership at every level, to get rid of these people who have done these things and start over again? And sir, if I may, um, in fairness to the workforce, they weren't trained to do the job, and I'll let Mr. Hellenan follow up on that mm -hmm. since he's in charge. They were not trained. Um, I will give an example of one of the supervisors who we recently sent to the VA training center. It was the first time he was sent to training in 20-some years of employment at the cemetery. They weren't, there weren't standards, there weren't procedures, and they weren't held accountable. The thing that Mr. Helen and I are doing is giving each and every one of the workforce the, the tools to do the job correctly. So you're saying these things were okay that occurred, basically. You're, you're defending the actions that were taken by this workforce. Are you not? Sir, I'm not defending the mistakes that were made in the past. But it's really okay what they did because we can just kind of explain it away. Is that what you're saying? No, sir, that's not what I'm saying. That's what I'm hearing. Mr. Congressman, uh, may I, may I uh, take part of that question, please? Please. It's not okay, and it's not acceptable. If there was any criminal wrongdoing, if the IG investigation comes back and provides recommendations about incompetence, misconduct... Oh, we know that's there. We'll address it. Please go ahead. Mm -hmm. We will address it. it will, a blind eye will not be turned. People will be held accountable. The employees, as Ms. Condon was, was uh, speaking to, were not provided leadership. For those of you who are combat veteran, my fellow Marine in, in the back, uh, no leadership, n no guidance, no direction, absolutely no training. They're one person deep out there. It's a very difficult and challenging situation, but I can assure you with 100% confidence, under our watch, if they do not respect and honor the services of our veterans, if it is misconduct, or if it is a performance issue, it will be addressed. Well, I, you referenced the Marine Corps, and I can tell you that leadership that I'm seeing here at Arlington couldn't lead starving troops to a chow hall. But, but that's fundamentally not the issue. That you referenced the Marine Corps, and every, every Marine has basic values, <clears throat> understands the basic mission. And what you're, in effect, telling me is these people were so incompetent or, or so poorly led that they didn't even understand what they were supposed to be doing. Is that correct? What I'm, what I'm saying, Congressman, is we need to change that culture. Well, I don't was, know how you there, can do with there those There was, there has been an identified and definitive problem, no doubt. We all know this. We need to change that culture and instill a culture of professionalism and a culture of honoring our veterans and caring. And we do that individually and personally by setting that standard and, and providing that leadership. And that is what's happening today. You don't honor veterans and their families by leaving people in place that have disgraced their memory. You get rid of them and you bring in people that, that have the integrity uh, without supervision, 20, you know, uh, that, that, that certainly can independently perform their job and understand, understand the sacred nature of, 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 of that ground because obviously the culture of Arlington today does not understand that. And that is a tragedy. And uh, I just don't see, maybe we need another change in leadership at the top because I don't think you all get it. I, I just don't think you get it. I don't think you get how these families are affected. I just don't think you get it. That's what I'm hearing today is you don't get it that you really fundamentally at the day, at the end of the day, don't care that you're bureaucrats in place. And we need something. To, we, we, we need to honor these veterans. We need to honor their families. We need to honor the sacred ground of Arlington. 
And I can tell you, we need leadership that respects that. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Coffey.